Hey, bunny, guess what? What? No, you you have to guess. You have to actually. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, one of those really hard boogers that you can't get out, and you just got to get up there and pick it. No, bunny. <laughs> Just no. No? Just no, okay? Not at all. You are just so off. Wow, Bunny. Are you okay? <laughs> I mean, I know that you are okay and you're not okay. You're you're in that state yeah. where you're both okay and not okay. I'm well aware of that state. I'm well aware of that state now. Yeah. But... I want to be there for you, Bunny, but the problem is I have a hard time explaining how or why I, I have... the Bunny, you see, the English language <laughs> is very limited in terms of, in terms of poetry. Yes. In, it's not that expressive of a language. It's very limited in terms of being able to properly describe what is going on in the depths of a man's soul. Yeah, but at least we have South Kakalaka. You yeah. know, I mean, that's... Uh, and, and that's why I really should learn Italian one of these decades. You know, the Italians, yeah. they have a much more expressive language, much more romantic language. There's just more I'm Italian. to Italian. You're yeah. Italian? Yeah, I am. I'm almost half Italian. Nice. Now Spanish is sort of in the middle, so it's so Spanish is, is is definitely more expressive than English. But then again, English is just banging two rocks together, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But Spanish isn't Italian either. But Spanish is a lot easier. So I wanted to uh, I wanted to to uh, so let me let me speak some Spanish to you, Bunny. Okay. Let me speak some Spanish to you to try and get you to understand. Under one condition. I, under one condition. What? what? You say it's soft and you say it's sexy. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's that's no problem. Let, so let me so let me let me try and explain to you how I feel using my native language, Espanolio. Uh, soy un padre con salchica gruesa. E no hablo español. You know what? Never mind. I do not know Spanish. <laughs> I tried to act like I knew it, but I don't know. The beginning it. of that was I, your dad. Okay. Well, according to Google Translate, I said I am a father with thick sausage, and I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> I don't. I don't trust Google Translate, but. I, so, I'm assuming that Google Translate okay. knows more about Spanish than I do because I don't know Spanish. I was like, I, yeah. I thought you were saying that gruesy, where that it was no, no. sausage. Gruesa. I'm like, no, salchicha is, sal is sausage. Yeah. Um. So I want to properly describe how I feel to you, Bunny. Uh huh. It, but I I don't know Italian or Spanish. And English is just the linguistic equivalent of a redneck fucking a watermelon. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So so English is out. So thankfully, I do know one more language, and it's very expressive. It might be the most expressive language yeah. ever, because I am bilingual. I do know two languages, so so it, it's a little language uh, called ASL, American Sign Language. Yes. G so Genie, I have a lot is, to tell Genie you, Bunny. is quite fond of it. Yeah, I have a lot to tell you, Bunny, right now in sign language. In sign language. In sign language. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so under one mind, condition. Yes. You do it slow, and you do it sexy. It kind of feels like two things, but okay, I'll let it slide. So, so let so let me do some sign language for you now, okay? Okay. Okay. Here you go. I mean that honestly. I mean that part honestly. That last part When's that I said there. I mean that 
honestly. When's okay. the next break? Yeah. I got to change these pants. Yeah. And I mean that. What I just said there, what I just said there, I, I mean that 100%. I, legit, I legitimately mean that to you, okay? I, I, I can tell it came from the heart. Okay. okay. And, and, I, and I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Let me continue. <laughs> Isn't that, wasn't that, wasn't that part funny? Oh, that man. was a funny. I, I, was, I, I literally didn't know you could sign that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was a funny bit. I was really proud of that when I when I wrote that. Okay, okay. Let me let me continue. I'm going to be really serious here. Okay. Ooh, I'm sorry. For, I, 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 I'm sorry for any German people who are offended by what I just said. I, you are all really great people, and I didn't mean any offense. Well, well, it was so, it was so like JFK until it hooked that left. <laughs> yeah, 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 and and. And and finally, Bunny, you know, in conclusion, and I really mean this part. Yeah, so I hope that helps you, Bunny. Yeah. So, just, so twice just, a day with the cream? It. Take it to heart. Remember, remember my words, Bunny. <laughs> Remember the words. <laughs> anyway, it's homework time yet again on the old Pope on Film podcast. <clears throat> People of the internet, your attention, please. Cease your yodeling kid memes and kindly pay attention. Each week, the dreaded Council of Dienas chooses a homework assignment via the fiery ritual of carousel. Yes. A homework assignment that has been painstakingly chosen with the expressed intent of bettering our listeners, nay, all good people everywhere. But not you, Michael Cohen. <laughs> Get your ass out of here. He's less a lawyer and more of like a fixer. And, you know? and yes, and isn't that exactly the person you want? You know? Yeah. Like yeah, like the That's FBI it. is trying to take down, like like the FBI is trying to take down Marcellus Wallace, but Marcellus Wallace is bulletproof. So what do you do? You go after the wolf. Yeah. Uh huh. Exactly. Because the, yeah, because the wolf is going to know all the shit. That's it, basically what they've done. This has only got this has only got like three months tops left. Three months. Yeah. The sad. The sad part is, is that the closer that the Mueller investigation gets to the president, the more the president is trying to get us into a war so that he can uh, take power yeah. for himself, 9-11 style. Yeah. He's basically going to he's basically going to try and escape the Russia investigation by reenacting the plot of the Star Wars prequels. Exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, you know, this world is so fucked up. If Jar Jar Binks appeared, I would not be surprised. <laughs> I vote yeah. for emergency yeah. powers. Fuck you, Jar Jar. Yeah. Jar Jar yeah. gave us the empire. That's what's happening. <laughs> yeah. The interesting thing is that in, in, in interview emerged. Apparently, CNN interviewed Michael Cohen in 2011. Yeah. And he's, he's literally there in, in the interview going, I protect Mr. Trump. It's yeah. less of a lawyer and it's more of I protect him. I protect his family. Yeah. Whatever he needs done, I am there for him. I protect Mr. <laughs> Trump. So uh, Guido-ian, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it sucks because we're so close. We're so close to the end of this. Yeah. But also, I don't want to see the end of this because it's going to be painful. But I, just, I, but I also just want to get it over with. But enough about the Avengers movie. I mean, I mean, look. Paul Ryan did not walk away for nothing. Yep. 
Yeah. He's like, yeah. I mean, jumping shit. I, I mean, he was setting himself up to eventually be president. And now he's like, you know what? I retire. I like the I'm bomb out. is ticking, you know, and he's yeah. running before it explodes. Yeah. You out. know, you're going to see you're going to see Paul Ryan doing that slow motion jump. As the government explodes behind him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool guys never look at explosions. He'll be shirtless, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's taking it easy. He's retired, so he's on slow time, so he's doing a lot more working out, so he's like really he's like really yeah. cut. <laughs> Maybe like a headband Rambo style. Yeah, yeah. That's what Paul Ryan did. <laughs> so this doesn't see, th yeah. Because the thing is, is like Robert Mueller would not have tagged him because 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 like this wasn't Robert Mueller. <coughs> That's why Robert Mueller passed it on. But yeah, he's got other shit on him. That's not a part of the investigation. So they they, yeah. they gave it to whoever I forget who actually was like, was it Pennsylvania? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but Mueller already for for Mueller to make that move, he already knows everything that that Cohen does. He yeah. just needs Cohen to say it. Yeah, because you because and who better because Cohen knows everything that Trump has done and tries to protect him. So it's just like, hey, it's you or him, man. Yeah. What? Uh, it, it, uh, Destiny's distracting me with memes. I'm sorry. No, it's funny. No, they're really funny. They're... She's, she's showing me uh, letters that kids have written to soldiers. Yeah. You know, because little kids at school write letters to soldiers, and one soldier in freaking Afghanistan somewhere is holding up a letter that he got from a kid, and it just says, "It's a it's a drawing of a gun, and it just says, have a good war." <laughs> <laughs> like that's positive, at least you know. <laughs> oh yeah. She showed me one, and it's this big, long letter that was very positive. But then at the end, it says, uh, P.S., I'm a vampire. Yeah. And that reminded me of Maxwell. It reminded me of the story time that I did for the nonprofit. There was one kid in the front that just kept saying, well, Mr. Steve, I'm a Komodo dragon. <laughs> <laughs> it was just this, like, six-year-old kid who just repeatedly – Jesus – who just repeatedly kept talking about how he's a Komodo dragon. Okay, look, 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 look. I don't think we should go there, okay? I think if if that child self-identifies as Komodo well, dragon... What kind of skill set? You know, we, 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 yeah. sh we shouldn't interfere. You know, that's what I'm we saying. Respect his <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know what the pronoun is concerning or, Komodo dragons. Or what bathroom they use. But we shouldn't use it. Good point. Yeah. Genie, well, what, 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 Genie, what bathroom are you suggesting that Komodo dragons are molesting children? No, I'm just wondering what bathroom they're going to use. <sighs> like, they, so they I can, can stay out of them. They want. Genie is really upsetting the Komodo dragon uh, what are you doing? community right now. <laughs> it's it's like my grandfather used to say when he used You're to right. say, "Hey Bella, your drink is there on the windowsill. You should get it before you forget about it." And the baby grabs it and spills it. So That's what my grandfather that? used to say all the. That's what my grandfather used to say all the time. Really weird. Where did you get this lifesaver from, Perfect. Eleanor? Uh, don't give it to me. I'm not giving it to you. You're going to freak out, but you don't understand that there are some candies that you don't bite. You don't understand that yet. You will immediately start biting this thing. 
<laughs> yeah, they, yeah, same. Welcome to the club. Feel the same way. That's just bouncing off me. I'm Teflon. And this week, we are doing something special for homework. We are watching and discussing an old movie that isn't big enough to carry a full episode of the Pope on film. Yeah. So we will be trying to bring this preemie to term yeah. right here in the homework segment. Therefore, this week's homework is the 1958 subliminal message horror film known as Terror in the Haunted House. And and here's the thing, Bunny. In the beginning this was of, this of was a podcast, this was a fun I, movie. This was a fun little yeah. movie. No, no, no. Uh, in the beginning of the podcast, you you said, uh, "Oh, uh, you had seen the wrong film." You you hadn't seen the film. No, the I looked. Is, I looked for the wrong film. I got I got a bit confused. Um, yeah, because you sent me the trailer. Well, first I procrastinated. It was it was kind of a strange week. I had like a like a kind of a breakdown the other day, and it was stupid. You know that's that's the problem. Like like oh my god, I can't fucking handle this. You know, but. I had gone to the drugstore to get a refill on one of my med- medicines, the Seroquel. And that's what is supposed to stop the anxiety, but it really quite doesn't, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But now at the same time, we have been out of we've been out of pot. Okay. So Gotcha. Cause remember that time I was late? Like I was really late when I was getting my license. That was March first, and I still haven't gotten the fucking license yet. You know? Yeah. So yeah. we've been out of pot because of that. And then the doctor had told me, you know, I could take two. He doesn't want me smoking pot. I I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> but now I've been out of pot, and now I'm out of the fucking seroquel. So so I freaked. You know. I didn't know how I was gonna get through it. But but Jeannie came home and took took very good care of me. She was like, let's go, let's go get a joint. Yay. Which like I can't I can't justify. Uh because they're so fucking expensive. If you don't have the license, the pot's expensive. And I never realized that. Are you still there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bella. So like a joint is usually anywhere with without a medical license. Yeah. A joint is anywhere between ten and seventeen dollars. Wow. So like I can't justify that. I don't I don't need pot that bad, you know? Yeah. But but no, like better. like Jeannie's like Jeannie said, let's go get a joint. I was like, eh, and but she she found some cheap ones for like eight bucks. So she got two of yeah. them. And on top of it at a real store, not like off the street. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. we go to an actual store for these things, which still freaks me out. <laughs> After after sitting in weird guys' apartments on their mattress, which is on the floor with a big hole punched through the wall to get a little pot for the weekend, <laughs> walking into a store still like, I, I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> when are they putting in a drive through? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh so so since we haven't smoked in a while. I like just smoked on the break. Uh, I am really fucked up. <laughs> Yay! Well, maybe I sense that because I just started drinking. Awesome. It's probably because we have like a we have like a psychic bond. Yes. You know. But but oh, the thing oh, oh. Is since that... since since we're off the road anyway. Um, yeah. So I'm going to be on that show in about two weeks. Yes. He doesn't have a firm date yet. 
But he's also coordinating with another guy, and they do have some really good guests coming up, you know? So it's yeah. kind of weird for me to be on. But uh, so I've been trying to think of things to talk about. Okay. And okay. I thought about the website. Now, the website, the church site. Um, yeah. I've been kind of wanting. Edward. To, org. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've been kind of wanting to give it a makeover for a while or something like that. But 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 I've come to a realization that the church site is now a historical monument. Pretty much. I mean, how it, it, how it cannot change. It cannot change ever. Okay. If I say that the it's church was for so long. Yeah. If I say the yeah. church was was founded in 1997, look at the web page, and you could. It, the the web page screams 1997. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's 20 years from 1997 to 2017, which in car terms officially makes that website a classic. So why are you also a liar? Yeah, they're... they're there aren't a lot of websites that have been around for as long as this website has been around. Yeah. The the only thing that can honestly make it better is if it was hosted by GeoCities. I do not know, but it smells a lot like smoke outside. Yeah, we are aware of this. Yeah. Uh, sorry, we got distracted. There are baby fights happening outside. <laughs> okay. Um, is, what's the money like? What are the odds? I'm not sure yet, but okay. there are baby. No, no, the babies are fighting. It's it's like baby MMA. Is is Eleanor involved? No, but we're we have been training her. <laughs> no, because that's not fair. That's that's like uh, that's like midgets fighting Andre the Giant. You know, yeah. Eleanor would destroy them. Oh. She is so full of rage. <laughs> but the thing about this week's homework for a sec. Uh, I, I want to mention uh, this before I forget. Okay, y'all, it's okay. The thing about this week's right homework, now. Terror in the Haunted House, I picked a film that yeah, that that I I thought for sure that even if you didn't watch it this week for the podcast, hey. I'm I'm certain you've seen this before. Yeah. You know. Because it's just one of those movies. It's one of those like old bad rhino home video movies that if you haven't seen it this week, you've definitely seen this movie before. Yeah. Okay. You haven't seen Terror in the Haunted House before with the subliminal messages in it? Mm, yeah. I thought you had. It's it's a really bizarre film. I saw it with Emerald, which is weird. Yeah. Yeah. What was that? She'll come in. Come on. Loaded on my computer. Oh, okay. Um, noise once in a while happens over here too. Yeah, once, in once in a great oh, while. A little bit. Hardly ever. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. So, so let's let's rip through this. Let's talk about terror in the haunted house. It is also known as my world die streaming. But it's it's more commonly known as oh it's that one shitty movie with the hidden messages. Okay, see so, now, see, okay, so so I got confused when when you sent me the trailer for, um, oh, a date something. Uh, a date with death. A date with death. Okay. I sent you the preview. I, I should have explained it because because. <laughs> This week's movie, this week's homework, Terror in the Haunted House, was filmed in Psychorama, and there were two films that were filmed in Psychorama. Yeah. It was Terror in the Haunted House and A Date with Death, and uh, it, it, they, 
Psychorama was essentially just subliminal messages. They hid subliminal messages in the movie to make you more scared. And sure, in 1958, people are like, oh, this is cute. This is funny. Oh, I was really scared. But then it's like the 60s and it's the 70s and people are seeing subliminal messages everywhere. And they're like, OK, we need to ban this film. <laughs> OK, really? So they banned the film and they literally got all of the like the 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 copies of the film and they literally removed all of the subliminal messages yeah so so after that in the 70s and 80s and stuff the 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 movie would show on tv and stuff without the subliminal messages so then rhino home video bought the rights to it and they and they wanted to release the film but it's not yeah. – but the subliminal messages weren't there. So what Rhino did is they added their own subliminal messages to the film. Oh. So they, like literally there's there are – so there's flashes of scary faces and, and stupid phrases like die louder or be prepared for blood. And there's <laughs> one – there's one part where the subliminal message is – uh, I think I still have it here. Uh, yes. Rent Rhino videos every day. <laughs> but I was explaining it to Emerald, and I and I said, it's sad because these cheesy, stupid subliminal messages, this wasn't the original film. We'll never see the original film. Yeah. So, so the subliminal messages were actually, uh, Christian's calling somebody. Okay. The subliminal messages were real and, and scary and frightening and not at all the stupid ones that are on all of the copies of Terror in the Haunted House that exist now. So then I remembered, oh, wait a second, I'm doing uh, research. And it's like, wait, they filmed two movies using Psychorama. So there's uh -huh. a second film out there that uses this same technique let me see if i can find this other film a date with death uh, and i couldn't find it but i did find a preview which does a great job of showcasing what the original psycho rama was like yeah the rhino home video version of psycho rama just shows like cheesy halloween clip art images hey, eleanor's going for the cup bella bella <laughs> Ah, oh, see, I warned you. Eleanor went for the cup. She almost spilled it all over our new couch. Oh, that! Oh, that sounded like a sports clip. <laughs> I got scared. I got so scared. That was, I was like a. I was like a. I was like a sports announcer in uh during the speed racer race. I, I, yes. Yes. <laughs> that was frightening. She's going for the cup. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bella, she's going for the cup. As God is my witness, he is broken in half. Stone cold. Stone cold. <laughs> oh. So, so... So I so I should have explained it to you when I sent you the preview for a date with death. Yeah. I just wanted you to see what the original Psycho Rama looked like and not the shitty version that's in the film Terror in the Haunted House. It it still looked awful. Though the font was yeah. awful. Well, well, they mentioned but, in the but, preview but, 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 that. But oh, so 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 anyway that that. That made me think it was that it was that movie, so I didn't check my notes. But while I was doing that, I was like, okay, and, and he said it also had another name. So I go through IMDB to find the other name. And it's something like uh the man who is the devil or something like that. So I yeah. go and I look for that. It's like, okay, well, this is it on another name. And I had found a copy by a horror host Bobby Ganmore or something like that mm, okay. and I started watching that a little and I had seen this before it is a Lon Chaney movie uh, it, it's an anthology 
kind of like hosted by Lon Chaney Jr. Um, yeah. He's almost as drunk as he was in Frankenstein versus uh, Dracula. Yeah. Just really drunk through his whole performance. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. That's that's all I wanted to get to. Mm. But I found another right. weird fucked up movie. <laughs> yeah, so so Terror in the Haunted House is just a it, it's a haunted house movie and those are are sort of typical. They follow a very similar format and they get boring and bland and a lot of talking. But in the spirit of William Castle and Alfred Hitchcock, every stinker can become a box office smash with what? A gimmick. A gimmick. Even so Harryhausen had a is, gimmick. Yeah, Terror in the Haunted House is just a boring ass clunker of a spook house movie. But what made the film notable is the fact that it used a uh, psycho rama, where the filmmakers inserted subliminal messages into the movie, just like Fight Club and the penises. Yes, they would flash words in just one frame of the film to scare you into you know the film is boring but there's secret messages in the film designed to try and make the movie scarier um so it was just a cheap gimmick like hey it's the 1950s we'll be using this new science called subliminal messages to make this movie even scarier for you so so yeah it, eventually the 70s happened and they removed all the fucking uh subliminal messages because they literally thought that it was a danger to to mankind and society the film was banned in its original format and all the copies were of the subliminal messages were destroyed they removed the subliminal messages and so the movie would play on tv as just this boring movie then rhino came along originally rhino was just a record company that specialized in comedy albums then in the 80s what was that? I, I just agreed. Oh, I looked it up, and, and I didn't believe it myself. They kind of specialized in in uh, uh, comedy albums and bizarre albums and the strange sort of albums that people, that normal record companies wouldn't cover, wouldn't release. But then in the 80s, they started actually releasing home videos, and God, I loved them. In the 80s and 90s, I had so much rhino yeah rhino home videos now i, I only just i only had an aerosmith tape um which they did for permanent vacation which was their yeah. downfall if you ask me <laughs> yeah so, okay let, let me just try to run through that real quick um I really liked them when they started. They were really a hard rock, heavy metal band, you know, uh, really up there with Zeppelin and, and things like that. Um, then Joe Perry left and Steve Tyler kind of did good on his own with like one album. Uh, forget the name. I forget the name of that. Honking album. on Bobo. Honking on Bobo. Um, and. Then Joe Perry came back w for Done With Mirrors, which I think is one of their best fucking albums. Done yeah. With Mirrors was really good. And then the very next album was Permanent Vacation. And I was like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> what happened? Yeah, that's, what happened? <laughs> that's when they became too big for their own good. Yeah. For their own bridges. Yeah. 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 Too big for their bridges, I tell ya. And I haven't given a shit since. <laughs> yeah. I went to rhino.com and, and they don't even, they don't do video anymore, DVD. They don't release movies at all anymore. Now they're just a fairly bland record company and that's really sad. I had Alice Cooper's Welcome to My, my Nightmare from uh, Rhino. Yeah. The, the actual stage act. Which was really yeah. kind of, yeah. Which was kind of weird and cool. I mean, I, good fucking god, that's a performance. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know what they have on Netflix right now, Bunny. What? 
a a filmed version of the stage musical Newsies. Oh God, I think I saw that. I did, not that I saw that. I saw that though. Yeah, calm down. I know you're excited. You know what else heard today? What? I heard on Netflix, uh, mm. the new Lost in Space. Oh, I've been oh. I've been seeing that on uh, on Facebook, which yeah. I've been dabbling in. Yes, I've noticed. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> uh, so unfortunate. So unfortunately, the original version of. Uh, terror in the haunted house just does not exist anymore the in the original they would flash words like fear and scream and death vote republican this version yeah (laughs) this version has has less frightening and more cheesy subliminal messages like buy rhino and and shit and and cheesy monster faces Unfortunately, the original version of this movie is just not available anymore, which sucks. But in all reality, I don't think that some slightly different words flashing on the screen would save this 76-minute shit burger of a film. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I could not see us focusing a whole damn episode of this podcast on the just this shitty movie. And that is why this movie is homework because it's like a preemie it's it it it, it's not long enough it's not strong enough to 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 grow to full size to you know yeah this movie just can't make it on its own the plot which is inconsequential is about a mysterious couple that won't stop fucking talking there's so much talking in this movie just stop (laughs) Okay. Yeah, okay, but you remember that middle bit? Okay? Right around, I don't know. Was that not a clear prediction of the Gulf of Tonkin attack that would happen a couple of years later? Oh, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, not a couple, a few years after that. Yeah. 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 So, 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 like, so I mean, the... that's fucked up. That's yeah. fucked up like that goddamn Malaysian flight. You know? Yeah, yeah. So it's a it's a husband and a wife, and the wife is haunted by dreams of a scary, frightening house. Then they move from Switzerland to America, and what is their new house? The answer will surprise you if you've been living in a bunker since the 1940s. No, you cannot have this lifesaver. You do not understand that you don't bite it. You are immediately going to break all of your teeth. And you can't write in this. This is destiny. You cannot write in this. Okay? You're just striking out left and right, Eleanor. You're just striking out left and right. Okay. Yeah, there you are. But I think, are. I think you have to give this movie a lot of credit. For that bold of an opening statement. Yeah. Okay. I mean, right off the bat, it is an indictment of the American society of which this film was existing. So true, buddy. Where, where, where so true. your dream house actually becomes your horror. You see what I'm saying? I mean, it had to have a white fucking picket fence. You know, that's yeah. the American dream, growing up, finding your dream house, getting married, and they turned it into a horror. So that's a bold statement for this movie. The film is basically just a, a, a bad melodrama disguised as a horror movie, and they won't stop talking. And, and, and Emerald saw some of it, and Amber saw a little bit of it. Well, Amber didn't really see it. She just saw me suffering through it. Yeah. Because I'm just sitting there going, okay, this has been on for a half hour, right? Nine minutes? Are you kidding me? <laughs> you are driving me insane, movie! So so the plot just twists and turns, but not like a thrill ride, more like an intestinal track. Yeah. One thing I will say is that the film was very frightening, 
in the sense that I, I watched a big chunk of it with Emerald and I, I realized that I could literally wrap my hands around Emerald's neck and choke her to death if it <laughs> meant getting out of watching this film. <laughs> That the movie was just so bad that I'm like, what if I just snap her neck? Do you think that would get out, get me out of watching the movie? Well, and I would have uh, 25 to life. Yeah, but not 25 to life. Watching the movie is what I'm saying. No, this is Oklahoma. They'd make me watch God's Not Dead. Wait, 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 wait a second here. Let's back up a second. So you were talking about choking your child to death. Yes. And Tasha's only concern is the time you'll get. <laughs> yes. She's a very rational say, person. Excuse me. I didn't say that was my only concern. I'm pretty sure she didn't say that. She said it without saying it. It's your saying it, first you know? concern. <laughs> Well, it'll probably get you 25 to life. Yeah. I mean, if Emerald is there, honey, saying, you better start looking for an apartment for your yeah. own safety. Remember, I'm a biological kid. I can go to foster care. Well, I mean, Emerald's technically not biologically his either. I'm just throwing that out there. Where have you guys ever tried to go crazy and murder people? Foster care. I wouldn't murder my own kin. Foster care before you murder me, then. I wouldn't murder you either. Look at this. You guys, why are you doing this? You're tearing, you're tearing me apart, Lisa! <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. 20 points for Gryffindor. But I'm not Gryffindor. Hey, honey. <laughs> I'm Gryffindor. Thanks, Dad. Apples and oranges. All that effort. I don't even get the point. Apples and oranges. A a a a apples and bananas, kids. Anywho... That is it for homework this week, and we here at the Pope on Film Podcast sincerely hope that your hearts, minds, and artery arteries have all been suitably opened. Ah! But don't think that you're getting out of here that easily, Buck Chacho. Buck Chacho, a combination of Bucko and Muchacho, verbal copyright 2018, Reverend Steve and the Pope on Film Podcast. Don't forget next week's homework assignment, and for next week, we will once again... Be getting a preemie and trying to take it to turn. There's a movie that, for whatever stupid reason, I have been itching to do okay. that we could never do as an actual full episode of the podcast. Next week, for homework, Frankenstein meets the space monster. Oh, I remember. I was going to get back Frankenstein meets the space monster. Okay. <laughs> Frankenstein meets the space monster. Also known as uh, Mars Attacks Cuba. That, that was a, another yeah. film. That, that was another title that this movie went by. It was filmed in Cuba, in case you couldn't tell. <laughs> by the alternate title. Anyway, next week for homework... Frankenstein meets the space monster. It, it's all over the place. It's on. You can yeah. download oh, yeah. it on archive.org. It's on YouTube. It's on Daily Motion. It's everywhere. It's, Frankenstein I, meets the space monster. I have cuts. I have cuts of that in our Chia Souls short. I'm not sure what you said. I, it it so got a bit garbled. I said I have cuts from that movie uh, in the Chia Pets. The Chia oh, Souls. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Classic film. Classic, horrible film. Yes. So I'm excited to, to finally get to really go through that movie with a fine tooth comb and talk about it. So that is next week. Be sure and join us next week for more homework with the Pope on Film Podcast. And cut.